Let's talk about this electric car scam, shall we? All right, we? yes, we shall. So a new report out shows that a switch to electric car cars could wreak havoc on the environment because all of that power has to come from somewhere, you know? Uh, but you may say the Paris Climate Accords, the Green Revolution. Don't we need electric cars to reach climate goals? Well, actually, this is not the way, and people who are paying attention to the supply chain and the actual economics of EVs already know this. The Guardian today published research from the Climate and Community Project in the University of California, Davis. Here is the study. Um, it points out a lot of th things that people who don't worship at the nonsensical green agenda altar have been saying for a long time. EVs are an entirely new problem. Um, here is how they lay it out. It says the U.S. transition to electric vehicles could require three times as much lithium as is currently produced for the entire global market, causing needless water shortages, indigenous land grabs. We're going to talk about land in a second. It's going to blow your mind. And ecosystem destruction inside and outside its borders, new research finds. It warns that the U.S., that unless the U.S. dependence on cars in towns and cities falls drastically, the transition to lithium battery powered electric vehicles by 2050 will deepen global environmental and social inequalities linked to mining and may even jeopardize the 1.5 uh, Celsius global heating target. You think? So we're going to break down what that means. Uh, but what are we going to do about it? Then, because states like New York and California are planning to outlaw gas cars in favor of only electric vehicles in the next 20 years or so, what are we going to do? Oh. We walk. That's yeah. what we're going to do. That's literally the solution of this paper. You knew Take this a look. was coming. It says, ambitious policies investing in mass transit, walkable towns and cities, and robust battery recycling in the U.S. would slash the amount of extra lithium required in 2050 by more than 90%. So we probably can't get there. We cannot continue to live the way we are living now. Um, but just switch out those cars with electric vehicles. So we're going to have to get used to walking. Um, that's not what we signed up for when we signed on to championing electric vehicles. Did we sign up to switch EVs to actually not drive them? Anybody? Uh, not, to, you know, to support cars we just can't use? Uh, this is what happened in California last year when the state was unable to power EVs. Um, this may very well be the future of electric vehicles. California was asking residents not to charge their vehicles because there was a gas car ban. Um, uh, days after announcing the gas car ban, saying our grid can't handle it. Well, yes, the grid cannot handle it. And the problem, not just the grid, because we've seen that already, uh, but the problem is lithium. Did you know that the U.S. was the leader in lithium mines up until the 90s? I didn't know that. No. And the U.S. was actually the one that pioneered lithium mining in order to make lithium batteries. But now 80 percent of lithium is mined in Australia, Chile and China. Well, I did know. I mean, all of our mining operations for the things that we need from uranium to lithium. I know that we've absolutely gone in the opposite direction and shut them all down. So we don't have any of it anymore. And now we need to get it all from either Russia or Kazakhstan or where was the, the from Australia, lithium? Australia, Chile yeah. and China is where 80 percent of lithium is mined. China controls half of the world's supplies and three fourths the lithium battery factories. Um, but it's not true that the U.S. doesn't have it. Absolutely literally sitting on it sitting on it just the mining operations are closed down but will not mine it actually the united states has almost 8 million metric tons of lithium um, is ranked one of the top five countries in rich in this element but it's expensive to mine in the u.s it's not expensive to mine in chile uh, plus environmentalists just straight won't let them uh, here is from an industry group talking about how uh, the Biden climate tax bill, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, provides incentives and subsidies for car buyers and automakers. And to qualify, battery makers must use raw materials from North America or a country which the United States has a trade agreement. But the problem is, despite dozens of potential lithium mines in the U.S. and Canada, most projects are in various stages of development and are many years away from production, particularly with environmental lawsuits delaying developments due to multiple entry points 
for litigation in U.S. regulation law. So many of these mines are just kind of sitting there because environmentalists are suing them. Uh, but China is able to do this economically, and so they control the lithium battery industry. Environmentalists, I want to point out, they're not wrong. Lithium mining, li lithium minium is not a word. Lithium mining has its own impacts on the environment, absolutely. Uh, see what climate researcher Bjorn Lumberg says. He says, in many parts of the world, electric cars are reliant on electricity largely produced from fossil fuels. So it takes fossil fuels to make, you can't make an electric car with electric power, mostly. Um, their production is also more energy intensive than that of a gasoline powered car, especially the battery. Since this production is typically reliant on fossil fuels, an electric car is actually responsible for lots of carbon dioxide emissions over its lifetime. Across the world, an electric car with a reasonably long range will on average emit 26 tons over its lifetime. So switching from a gas powered car emitting 34 tons of carbon dioxide compared to an electric car that emits 26 tons doesn't eliminate emissions. It cuts them by 24%, leaving three quarters still in place. So we're talking about just like you farting around town. That's nice. We're, the, the actual production of the car is not much greener uh, and not much more accessible. Um, he goes on to say, like, what if we do it, though, if we actually do it? The impacts will be minimal. The International Energy Agency hopes we can reach 130 million cars by 2030, which is a breathtaking expectation, given we have spent decades and billions of dollars in subsidies to reach just 5 million. But even if we do, even if we could cut to that, it would cut a trifling 0.4% of global emissions by 2030. 0.4%. Electric cars, he says, will be a part of our future, but they are not about to solve climate change. Um, he's been warning this, and now other reports are co corroborating that. Um, we're not even in, in this segment. I left out research about the water that it takes to produce electricity, which California doesn't have. Um, I, you know, I'm not talking about how uh, we're going to store the power that we need to run electric vehicles, because that is a whole other ball, ball of wax. But let's just for a second... Think about, well, what if those electric vehicles ran on renewables like solar and wind? Um, that's not really possible. Uh, it, one reason, just one reason alone, Michael Schellenberger po points out in his book, Apocalypse Now, he says for the never. United, uh, I'm sorry, Apocalypse Never. Um, for example, if the United States were to try to generate all of its energy with renewables, 25 to 50% of all land in the United States would be required. Half, almost half of the United States territory land would be needed for solar and wind in order to power the lives we have now. By contrast, today's energy system requires just 0.5% of land in the United States. I find that data shocking, that estimate shocking. Think about, yeah, you would just be driving across the American countryside and it would just be filled with like buildings that are housing batteries. Like, that's it. You wouldn't see hills, trees. It would just, the whole country would just be a building, one giant building filled with batteries. Not just batteries, uh, you know, in solar and wind, which yeah, we, yeah. which is, we don't, we cannot depend on. And then as well, batteries to store it. Phil H in our chat. Thank you for the super chat, Phil. Phil says EVs, electric vehicles need recharge stations when, which comes from utility companies supported by fossil fuels, yes. let alone the batteries, lithium blowing up by over recharging, discharging. Yes. So it's absolute hypocrisy, of course, because it need all of these recharge stations are backed up by hydrocarbons, fossil fuels. Yes. Or well, my concern coal, is coal, yeah. um, which we talked about uh, not to, uh, I'll get to your concern in a second, uh, David, mm -hmm. but um, no in China, um, in certain areas in Shanghai that actually have more electric vehicle adoption than any other place, the batteries are charged, like people plug in to EV stations that are coal powered, which means that more people will now die of air pollution in those regions than before because uh, the emissions have gone up because imagine? of the reliance on coal. We are a mad world. It is a clown world. Go ahead, David. I was going to say, like, we all remember the GM EV, right? There was a huge movement behind that car. Yeah, in the 90s. Everybody was buying them. And then all of a sudden, somehow, they took them from everybody. So I don't know if they only allowed leases or something on those vehicles. So it's like 
do are we going to see something like that again where it's like okay we're going to get all these people to lease these electric vehicles and then in order to get them to start walking and riding bikes we're just going to confiscate and smash them all because if it's not any any better to the environment and they can't really sell that like it just seems like that's kind of uh, because like every step along the way of an electric vehicle relies on fossil fuel still like yes. how will they ever end that dependence there's no way right Yes. Yeah, they'll just uh, come to your house and take them back like they did the in the nineties. Yeah, they, they just and showed up at your house. And I don't know where, where, if those if those had lithium batteries. Do you guys know if that was the same technology of battery? Uh, I don't know about those By in chance? the nineties. I don't know. I mean, the original electric cars were used salt batteries for a mm. hundred years, more than a hundred years were like mm -hmm. salt batteries back a hundred years ago. I did not know that. Um, meanwhile, while we keep pushing EVs without a plan to actually have a society that runs on EVs. Like most climate policies, it is uh, the poorest people who will suffer first. Um, in this case, we saw just last year, Jeep laying off a work uh, a factory of 1,300 people in Illinois because they need to shift those jobs over to Mexico, where it is actually affordable to make EVs. Um, so, you know, these are, the, these are the consequences that get started when you haven't thought a plan through. And environmentalists, you can't have it both ways. You can't champion electric cars without doing a real calculation on how they hurt the earth. And you can't hoodwink people into thinking that EVs are the future of the planet. And then, oops, all of a sudden we have a society where you can only buy cars that you can't actually use. And that is what's going to happen, according right. to the authors of this study. And they present it like, it's okay, you're you're just going to walk and it'll be totally fine. You'll just take a bite. Um, here is this lead researcher, Kira McDonald, saying, despite the cultural attachment on, to driving, fewer cars on the road will not mean a sacrifice to your quality of life. She's just telling you that. Just trust her on that. <laughs> um, if the policies, institutions, and spending patterns that shaped our existing car-dependent infrastructure and built environmental change, then alternative modes of transportation can be made safer far more convenient and faster than cars and immensely more pleasant and fun. Okay. When's the last time you took BART? Cause, um, I don't, in San Francisco, that's not fun. And so you're, that's going to have to come a long way before you make that absolutely fun. Uh, but yeah, they're just sort of letting you know that EVs are not going to get you very far. Uh, you won't be able to power them or drive them very far. Um, and it's going to change how you live, but you're going to have fun on the bus. Well, yeah. And not to mention the problems in cold weather. Of course, there's been all sorts of reports about these new pickup trucks and so forth that, you know, don't hold a charge. I mean, I, we knew that we've known this for electric vehicles in the cold, like their battery percentage drops precipitously. Yeah. But a lot of these big pickup trucks where people rely on that extra, that extra mileage, those extra battery charges to do heavy work, every, well, well, you know, half of you're getting half a charge that you're promised because it's cold outside. Right. You don't get that with your, your gas powered car. And it's just an unconscionable bait and switch that we're told, like we absolutely can do it. We can run like clean cars and they're not clean. You and have so to wonder we should if this at least, the they should be honest with us. Do you think this is the plan? Like we're going to hoodwink you with this, this garbage about electric cars, electric vehicles. And then, well, you know, it didn't work, but now we've already moved away from fossil fuels. That was dirty. So you're just going to walk. Yeah, you're just going to take public transportation. Yeah. You're just going to take a bike. And this is the plan. And it's not even good to go anywhere. We want you home anyway. Of course, this is the World Health Organization plan. We want to keep you in these 15-minute cities, right? There's already one rolling out in California. We want to keep you in these 15-minute cities oh, yeah. where you will walk everywhere. You'll ride your bike or whatever. You don't have to go anywhere. There'll be the food shopping there. If you want to leave that zone, you'll have to get special social credits be in, in, in order to go visit grandma who lives in a different town. Yeah. Like this is demented. This is what's happening. And this is all, I mean, we knew this was coming. We knew this was coming. I mean, I, I get that environmentalists are like, well, use less, conserve less, simplify your life. Um, that is not how you get most people out of poverty, uh, you know, to just like keep them in a lesser way of life and then ask people to live with less. That's not going to save the planet. It's a nice idea, but it's only all right for some. If you've got a nice job where you're just sending email all day yeah. in your pajamas, um, but uh, I, I just think that it's, it's important to see how this is being framed right now. They're sort of saying, this probably won't work, but we're still going with it. And you're going to like these changes and you'll just, you'll, you'll walk and take the bus. Cool. Um, you know, that wasn't the original sales pitch.
No, and they're going to take your cars too on top of it. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.